the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. While visiting the inmates at Pelican Bay Maximum Security State Prison here in California, while I was stationed in Crescent City, I would go and visit them. I got to know the inmate who was the librarian. And something that doesn't happen very often at Pelican Bay, on a technicality, his conviction was overturned and he was told that he would be released. A couple days later, I hear that he committed suicide right before his release. And in his note, he wrote that he didn't know how to live without the prison. It is often the case that people who are released from jail or from prison will commit a crime just to go back to prison. They want the walls. They want the cell. They don't want the freedom. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus says, Take nothing but always wear sandals. Why sandals? 80% of the population during that time were slaves. They were slaves. Slaves were not allowed to wear sandals. You are no longer a slave. I no longer call you slaves, Jesus says. You are my friends. In other words, we are not slaves. We are free. But freedom is within us, not outside of us. Freedom is something in me, not outside of me. And Jesus wants us to be free. I could be in a prison, but am I free is the question. I met many people incarcerated for life, but they were free. And at the same time, I met many of the corrections officers there at Pelican Bay State Prison who were in prison in their life. Unhappy. No freedom. What is the source of 
our unhappiness and the source of our enslavement, the source of depression, the source of anxiety, the source of that which makes you feel like you are in a prison. What is it? The devil. And the devil today, we are told, is the source of the unclean spirit within us. Jesus went about his whole ministry driving out demons. In fact, he says, in my name I give you authority to go out and drive out unclean spirits. What are those unclean spirits? Well, it's anything that makes you feel like you are dirty. Hmm? Satan the word Satan is a Hebrew word which means your accuser, the one who accuses you. So a person going to prison, if you're arrested, there's a picture for you. You have the prosecutor, the one who accuses you, and then you have your lawyer who is defending you. Satan is always the one in our life that accuses us. It's that voice that says you are unclean, huh? that you are dirty, that you are no good, hmm? that there is something wrong with you, that you're a misfit, you know, because you've been married three times, or four times, huh? So you're, you're dirty, you're unclean because you were a drug addict, you took drugs in the past, huh? Or because you were an alcoholic, you're bad, hmm? Or because You had an abortion. That voice always tells you, you know, how bad you are, huh? In you. Or because you slept around. Uh, you're dirty, huh? Or because of your sexual orientation. There's something wrong with you, huh? You're horrible, or because of your skin color, hmm? or right now in the political discourse, because you're a Republican, you're bad, or you're a Democrat, you're bad, you know, because of your political views, huh? you're horrible, We're always accusing each other, huh? or because you're an immigrant. You're horrible. And we believe those things. We believe that our mistakes have made us a mistake. And hence, that's how you have an unclean spirit in you. And what does Jesus come to do in our life and gives the authority to the church to do? To clean those unclean spirits. To absolve. To drive out those demons which are making you feel dirty. To clean you up and to say, no, you're okay, huh? You know? Nothing wrong with you. 
You're just a sinner like everybody else. <laughs> We're all feces-producing machines. Huh? Every single one of us. And God forgives every single sin and mistake that we could ever commit because God loves us unconditionally so very much. All we have to do is ask for the forgiveness. And God forgives us because God is pure mercy. People are not. People are accusers. You know, they're always pointing the finger. Oh, you're, you're this, you're that. And you know what your mistake in your life is? That's why you lead a sorry life, if you do. That you've believed it. Stop it. Whose voice are you listening to? The accusatory voice or the voice of Jesus? Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me. Whose voice am I listening to? God is a trinity, we believe. And the Holy Spirit, in Greek, parakletus. Parakletus, the one who stands next to you. In other words, your lawyer, paraclete. Your defender. God wants to defend you against those accusatory voices. And he's given you sandals to wear. Are you wearing the sandals? Take nothing except your sandals. Do we have those sandals on every day of our life? The twelve drove out many demons and, in, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them all. That's healing. Inside spiritual healing. Jesus says that so very poignantly. What's easier to say to the person? Pick up your mat and go home or tell him, your sins are forgiven. Most of our issues are on the inside of us, aren't they? To have our sins forgiven. To know that we've been forgiven. We've been washed clean by the blood of Jesus. All of our mistakes, everything, and that we are to wear sandals in our life. And to stop listening to the accusatory voices around you who want to make you feel unclean and put that unclean spirit in you. There's nothing wrong with you. Hmm? Stop being your own worst enemy. That's your issue because you keep listening to all those voices and taking them in. You don't listen to Jesus you prefer listening to the demons. All those around you who keep saying, you're this, you're that. So whose voice are you going to be listening to? I choose to listen to the voice of Jesus. And I invite you to do the same thing in your life every day. Always to turn on the voice of Jesus. Turn off the voice of the demons. That's how we do it. You know, those voices come all the time. And what are you going to do? You got to turn them off. How? You replace them. They bombard you. You say, mm, off. Jesus, on. That's how you do it. You get it? Oh, well, if you did, you know. <laughs> Turn on the voice of Jesus. That's how we drive the demons out in our life. 
unclean spirits. He always says impure spirits. Get rid of them. Drive them out. Replace them with the voice of Jesus in your life. Jesus who loves you so very much and always will. No matter what. There's nothing you can do to stop making Jesus love you. Ever. God will never stop loving you. Ever. We may get away from God in our life, but God never gets away from us. He's always there for us, always. And you have to remember that each day of your life. Because in this life, as you know, it's not easy every day to believe in God when you have problems and suffering and things happen. But you have to remember every day that God always believes in you, even if because of the circumstances in your life you may not be believing in Him 100% of the time. 100% of the time God believes in you. Hmm? And that's what we celebrate today in a very special way as we baptize Iris May. Baptism. Did you hear the letter to the Ephesians? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before Him. In love, Listen up. He destined us mm, for adoption. I'm speaking right now from the Bible here. He destined us for adoption through himself. To himself. Through Jesus Christ. In accord with the favor of his will. Mm. Adoption. Why? I just told you. 80% of the population were slaves. And in Roman times, you could get rid of your child like that. They burned your food. They did something you didn't like. Out! You're no longer my child. But if you adopted a child, and it was very common to adopt, because everybody wanted to have an heir, especially a male heir. And so they would adopt children. If you adopted a child, you could never get rid of that child, ever, for no reason. And their inheritance could never be taken away from them. That's why in adoption, we are not made children of God. Because everybody's a child of God. The Pope reminds us of that all the time. Even atheists are children of God. Everybody is a child of God, baptized or not. But in baptism, we become adopted children of God. And that means your inheritance could never be taken away from you. Once you are adopted, you are God's forever, whether you like it or not. That's why baptism is so very special. Iris today is becoming an adopted child of God. God is adopting her. That's why baptism can never be taken away from you, ever. Once you're baptized, you're baptized whether you like it or not. Somebody came a couple months ago and they became Jehovah Witness and they said, I want you to take me off of the list of Catholics. Take my name out of the book. Can I do that? No. <laughs> you Catholic, whether you like it or not. 
You're baptized whether you like it or not. You will always be baptized. And that's what we're celebrating today.